to Observing Technology presented by the Capital PC User Group. My name is Dennis Courtney and I'll be your guide as we look into interesting technology for everyday people. We want you to both at home and work take advantage of some of the technology that we're going to show you. Now generally we focus on personal computers but from time to time we take a look at other forms of technology we know you'll find both fun and informative. So sit back and enjoy the journey as we take a look at today's interesting technology. Today's entire show will be devoted to high-definition television. You'll learn everything you need to know before you sink any money into a system. We're pleased to welcome my good friend and nationally known writer for HDTV Magazine on the web and for HDTV Etc. Magazine, Rodolfo La Maestra. Rodolfo, welcome to Observing Technology. Rodolfo will discuss the variety of technologies regarding HDTV. So, Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in, in HDTV, Rodolfo. Uh, my background is in computer science. I've been working for 40 years in computer science and electronic engineering. And I got involved with uh, HDTV about 20 years ago. I've been following the industry since that time. On 1998, when it was introduced, I started to get uh, equipment and uh, uh, testing the uh, signals and uh, figuring out how was the reception in Washington, D.C. Um, later on, I got involved with the writing about this uh, technology. And as you say, I'm writing for a couple of magazines now. And I wanted to use the opportunity today to uh, show some of the concepts behind the technology and also give some tips that are relevant to uh, purchase or uh, decisions to be made in uh, regard to types of equipment and uh, connectivity and so on. Okay, great. Now. I know you and I have talked about HDTV before, and one of the things that always confuses me is the different types of technology. They really are different, aren't they? Well, the umbrella concept is uh, DTV, that's digital television. Uh, it was a mandate from the FCC that uh, make uh, the uh, regular television, which is NTSC, which is 480i, is an interlay system, uh, to be away on 2007, only when 85% of the population receive digital television. So uh, as it looks, it's not going to be in 2007. It could be a few years later. Okay, but what are the different types of technology? Well, within DTV, uh, we have three levels. Uh, the regular level is a standard uh, television, which is called uh, SD. That is uh, uh, 480i, which is pretty much the digital, digital version of the current TV. It's an interlace uh, sent digitally. And uh, it matches pretty much to what we have in interlaced DVDs and satellite and cable, the versions that are in regular channels. Now, when you say interlaced, you mean that the, those lines that we see? Yes. In? Well, uh, interlaced, the concept is that it doesn't paint, uh, using the word paint, it doesn't paint the 480 lines in one shot like it will be on a computer. It shows 240 and then 240 in between. Uh -huh. The uh, retention of the eye makes you believe that you're seeing 480. And uh, that's going to go away with uh, 480p, for example, which is the uh, uh, second level within the TV, the enhanced dis definition. Uh, that is similar to what is progressive DVD, which is 480p, 480 lines. It will make you feel that uh, the image is thicker, is cleaner, and... Uh, A lot crisper. Exactly. Okay. The next uh, level up is what is HD. And that is uh, uh, basically two levels within HD. It's 720p, which is a progressive format, and uh, 1080i, which is the interlaced format. 780p, because it shows all the lines in one shot, is much better for fast action sports and things like that. Oh, like my because hockey it's games. Right. <laughs> okay. It's in yeah. basketball, things like yeah. that, because you show 720, and then in a 60 of a second shows another 720. And when the movement is too fast, uh, the, the interlaced system might have deficiencies. So uh, when you see that the image is uh, for fast action games and things like that, like ESPN, uh, they, they have gone, in fact, to 720p okay. on the high definition version they have. But that 1080i, that's more for movies and stuff like 1080i that? 1080i is more for films or uh, images that do, do not move that fast. And the concept is a little different. And when you have 720p, you're only counting the vertical lines, but you have pixels horizontally. On 720p, you have 1280, 1280 pixels horizontally. But on the 1080i format, you have 1920, which is uh, much more than the other one. Ah. So it gives you a, a spatial image that is much thicker than what it is 720p. 
So when you have an image that is fast, the 720p catch up faster, but the 1080i is much better to show a thicker image on something that doesn't move that fast. A richer image. A richer okay, image. Okay, great, great. I explain a little bit what is progressive and interlace. I'm not going to touch that subject again. But uh, for example, just to give an idea of what's the density or the uh, resolution of the high definition TV image compared with what we know, uh, when you put 1080 and 1920 together every 30 of a second, which is pretty much one frame of high definition TV, it gives you over 2 million pixels. Okay. So uh, that is about nine times of the resolution of the current TV, which is basically 480i by 450. And uh, when you compare this with DVD, it's about six times the resolution of the DVD. All of them compare at the same 30 frames per second. When you really have an image that can be displayed with that density and, uh, and is, uh, you know, from the camera to the home, that way you will see a lot of uh, quality on it. Okay. Now, uh, as I say, this is going to be mandatory only for digital television. It means that uh, high definition TV not necessarily is mandatory is an option. Uh, we have several cases on which broadcasters are taking one uh, slot dedicated for high definition TV and use it for different standard resolution channels. Means that uh, they distribute the quality of the signal in a way that they have more channels within the same bandwidth, which is six megahertz. Uh -oh. So uh, when you think that the entire bandwidth is to show you the good definition of uh, high definition 1080i and then somebody will just uh, reduce it later on because they want to have uh, more SD channels uh, you end up with some compromises and that could be a uh, reduction on the uh, on the quality of a high definition picture so we try not to get to that point okay. and we suggest to encourage the broadcasters to do some type of uh, a high definition concept all the time meaning going towards quality rather than quantity now, uh, we have different technologies on the street. When you go buy a TV, you got the typical CRTs, which are tubes. You got DLPs, LCDs, LCOs, uh, plasmas, and then you have the regular uh, division of whether this is direct view, rear projection TV, or front projection. You will see all kinds of TVs. The ones that are uh, going to move uh, faster now are the uh, panels. People like uh, to have panels on the wall, so you're going to see more LCDs and plasmas. And what technologies do they use? That, are they different than the other technologies? Well, each of them have a different technology. Some of them use chips, some of them use, uh, use uh, tubes. And uh, uh, they are different in concept, they're differing in quality. You can see some differences, weaknesses, and pluses in each of them. Now, when you have uh, the situation that the digital cable and, and, and satellite is right now, we have for example, uh, uh, a lot of, of, uh, of the services that are based upon the regular 480i concept of digital, but there are some channels that they show on high definition TV. So you're going to have a variety of uh, high definition TV channels depending on the service you choose. There's also high definition TV on the broadcast, meaning that you can tune to a regular antenna, UHF, VHF, and get the uh, broadcast. How's the reception that. on those? Oh, it's wonderful. I, I, in fact, uh, I have, uh, since 1998, pick up uh, stations from Baltimore uh, down in uh, Fairfax uh, that uh, in regular TV was full of snow and uh, imperfections and bleeding colors and things like that. And with the antenna on uh, high definition TV, as long as the ones and zeros on the air hit the antenna, you will get a perfect signal. Ah. And I got that. And in, in fact, my antenna is on the attic. It's not even outside. Wow. So I pick up uh, signals that are 60 miles away, and they are clear. Now, that is not necessarily the, the case for everybody. Some, t some people, for example, people in New York will have problems with uh, receptions because antennas will, uh, will, will be between buildings and things like that. So uh, we're trying to figure out what are the best ways to um, uh, install antennas whenever we find cases like that. I'm saying that because I also sometimes help people install equipment. Now, there is another distinction that I like to make, which is uh, uh, when you go to high def, you're really looking into another format, which is the widescreen. It's not anymore 4x3. It's wider. You will see it uh, with the image like it will be going to the movie theaters. That's 16 by 9 Exactly. Yeah. But what happens is that because most of the channels are not 16 by 9 they are 4x3 for the time being, mm -hmm. uh, somebody buying that kind of TV, the one that is 16 by 9 will see a 4x3 within two black bars. 
On the side. On the side. Okay. But those new TVs will allow you to expand the image to fill the entire frame. So somehow you will be able to have the choice of showing a regular 4x3 or showing different geometries of the same image. It doesn't really sound like that uh, digital television is really kind of settled on a standard here. They settled on many standards. Well, uh, it was uh, a situation a, a year ago, a couple of years ago, regarding the, uh, the broadcasting uh, system. Uh, they were thinking that uh, it could cause uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, problems and uh, they tried to switch to another one, but it was uh, recommended to continue like that. Okay, so they've got that kind of, with the different things, it's still going to be a little bit more confusing for us poor consumers as to which one we're going to end up buy, buying. You have a lot of options, and um, but uh, most of the uh, standards are settled down. Okay, great. All right. Well, stay tuned, because right back after the break, Rodolfo is going to show us what to buy, and hopefully not what, what not to buy, excuse me, uh, when putting together your own HD TV system. So uh, hang on, we're going to talk about how we're going to buy one of these, because I'll tell you, I'm sure confused. Okay, we're back with nationally known HD TV writer and consultant Rodolfo La Maestra. Rodolfo, I want to put together my own HD TV system at home, but I don't have $100,000 to put into uh, my system at home. Uh, what should I be looking towards to both put together a system that I'm going to be happy with and not spend a lot of money? You don't have to spend $100,000 to get a system like that. Uh, basically, you need two things uh, to start with. You need a display device, which could be a CRT, a plasma, something that displays HDTV. And by definition, that has to be 720p or 1080i. Uh, you also need a tuner a tuner that will be able to pick up the signal and send it to the display device. Depending on the service you have, if you have antenna or if you have a cable, if you have satellite, you buy a different tuner. Now, newer TVs are coming with an integrated approach, meaning that the tuner is inside the TV, but it might happen that you buy a TV with a tuner that you're not going to use. Because if you're a satellite subscriber, for example, and you don't use cable, you might be paying for a tuner into the TV that is cable-oriented. That's a great tip. So uh, my uh, first uh, tip to you is try to buy a monitor TV with a tuner separate. And uh, there are uh, TVs that uh, were costing in 1998 around $10,000. Those same TVs with better technology, better line dollars, and uh, better screens cost right now uh, over $1,000. Wow. So uh, now you can go to plasmas, you can go to uh, uh, 60 inches, up to 80 inches plasmas, it's going to come over and spend $25,000 on those. But you don't have to uh, get to that expenditure if you want to keep it low in cost. Okay. A tuner could cost you between $300 and $800, depending on whether you are tuning over there or you're tuning a cable or including a cable, you can probably uh, get by not uh, buying the tuner. You can rent the, the tuner from the cable company which is usually recommended when the uh, uh, technologies like this are settling down because uh, you don't want to expend too much in a technology that later on that tuner changes or uh, happens to have problems and things like that. So if you have a choice and you have cable, I'd rather lease the box. Great. Now, uh, if you want to record high def, uh, they just come out with two products. One is basically uh, TiVo oriented, which is called PVR, Personal Video Recorder. Mm -hmm which is around 450 to $1,000, depending on what you want with it. For you to store that in the hard drive or capabilities to take the signal out for some other things, to tune satellite at the same time that you're tuning over there. Now, uh, you can also uh, do a DVHS, which is a digital version of the VHS, which uh, is more for archival, is what we know as a tape, rather than time shifting. Mm -hmm. uh, and that could go between 500 and 1,000, depending on the problem you buy. When you connect uh, those products, the tuner, the display device, the VHS, you need basically uh, a broadband wiring uh, of the kind of a DVI, HDMI, and a 1394, which is a firewire, uh, for you to be able to have uh, the uh, signal uh, being transmitted to one device to the other one in a protected manner. 
And also you're probably going to be needing some component analog wiring, which is the one that uh, sends a signal to older TVs that didn't have DVI and HDMI, which is with the, uh, the TV t uh, digital connectivity. So if you maybe have one digital television in your house and three or four of the old style, you're going to want to be able to take that right. satellite and signal and split it. Right, and, and send it through a network on 480i to the regular TVs that you have in the house, while they're sending at the same time uh, a 1080i signal to the high definition TV you have on the studio, for example. Uh, now, that's regarding video. Regarding audio, you have the standard within high definition TV, which is Dolby Digital. Dolby Digital is, is a discrete system, which is 5.1 channels. It's uh, left, center, right on the front, and then two surrounds, which is stereo. You have left and, and right surround, which is not like Dolby ProLogic, which is a monorail with two speakers, but it's only one channel on the back. Now, the point one is a subwoofer. If you pick up a signal that is high def, and that comes with a 5.1, uh, you will need a tuner of the uh, uh, sound, which is probably a, a receiver, or you have a, a processor, or, or some kind of a, um, a pre-amp uh, that is able to decode that signal and send it to the right speakers. Uh, you can buy amplifiers that are or receivers from $300 up, maybe even cheaper than that, that has that quality. Obviously, you have to judge, uh, the, depending on the room, whether you need X number of watts or, or uh, less or more, depending on that. And in that case, uh, the expenditure could go up. But you can start with that. Now, uh, you're obviously going to be needing five speakers. Left, center, right, and then the two surrounds, and you're going to be needing a subwoofer. I'll say probably the subwoofer, you can start with $300, and the uh, uh, five speakers with $800. You have to remember that uh, uh, when you play a movie with Dolby Digital, you're going to have a lot of action, a lot of uh, bass on the subwoofer and so on, so you don't want to cut it short. Uh, now, some people like to have the TV doing the center channel, using the uh, speakers of the TV, and using the amplification of the TV. Sure, it's right usually the that, is, that yeah. is a bad idea. Why? Because usually the TV has around 5 to 10 watts of amplification and two very small speakers on it. Ah. And then you have your left and right with 100 watts a channel on your main stereo. So they're drowning out your center. Exactly. When you play a movie, 60% of the movie uh, uh, soundtrack is going on the center channel. So that's going to end up uh, basically running out of steam much earlier than the left and right. So my recommendation is go with left, center, and right speakers of the same uh, broadband, you know, all the frequency mm -hmm. coverage, the same size, and also the same amplification. You can probably play with the surrounds and do it a little smaller if you want. Uh, but they are also now on Dolby Digital, they are the full bandwidth. They are going 20 to 20 kilohertz. It's not like Dolby ProLogic that end up much lower than that. Now, if you don't want to go to that, then now uh, products that are called home tiered in a box. Oh, yes, I've which, seen those. Which yeah. have basically, uh, you know, the decoder, the, and you can spend probably $300 and you can get all that. If you have a small studio and you want to deal with that that way, then it, probably you can start with that. Or you want to put it in a bedroom or something like that. It's appropriate for those sorts of things. Definitely. What can you add to that? A good progressive DVD player. You can spend $250 plus with that. And uh, a DVD recorder and uh, extra speaker for the uh, back surround. It's a, it's a new surround in the back of you, in addition to the left and right surround. Wow. You can add more subwoofers. You can even add a tactile system that is uh, basically producing vibrations on the floor, in addition to the volume that you generate on the, uh, on the subwoofers. Yeah, I know a fellow who has that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, you need to budget for good wiring, yeah. especially on the video part the high definition video, uh, don't go cheap into, into that. Don't spend a $20 wire when you can uh, buy uh, a little more That's quality. That's going to be your interference, because what yeah. you're talking about is a very componentized uh, uh, Yes. Structure. I've seen people spending thousands of dollars on the display, the tuners and so on, and then spending $20 on a piece of wire. And it's, it's creating a compromise right there that uh, I will not recommend. I'm not saying spending $1,000 on the wire, but I'm saying just trying to make it as good quality as you can afford. I mentioned about whether going to integrated TVs or not, and uh, I made a, a review on one of these uh, issues about uh, all the uh, TVs that are going out now in 2004. And uh, on average, I found that the, uh, the integrated TV costs around $704 more than a regular TV, which is a monitor, just okay. because of the tuner. Wow. Some of them were over $1,000. 
and some of them were around uh, 450, but the average was around 704. So you got to be totally sure that the tuner that is inside the TV is what you need before you buy it. For a long term. It is a mandate from the FCC that uh, this year we're going to have any TVs that are going 36 inches and higher. 50% of those, the manufacturers had to have a tuner into it. But hopefully, for example, like plasmas that do not have a tuner now, uh -huh. some of them, you can probably buy your monitor TV and just add the tuner later on. That's the other thing, that you can take time to buy things. Sure, buy a piece at a time. Exactly. Now, uh, on the cable side, it was a mandate, uh, I should say a cable agreement recently done, uh, and uh, the FCC with the uh, cable industry have agreed that uh, we're going to have tuners into the integrated TVs with a cable car, like the cars that we have, for example, for DirecTV or this network. And those cable cars, we enable uh, a viewer to have premium TV and so on, and basically the tuner will just expect you to get the cable car from the uh, provider, and then you put the cable car and you oh. you, you can see HBO and pay-per-view and all that. Great, that'll be a lot handier than what we It do will today. be, yeah. yeah. However, those tuners that are now going to the market are only unidirectional, means that uh, they will not have the video on demand capabilities, the impulse pay-per-view, which is not using the phone to get a, a movie, but using the remote, so that means that you're probably going to end up having a set-top box to have those features. So again, if you buy a cable TV with an integrated, then you end up probably buying another set-top box. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a lot of tips that uh, mm -hmm. I could continue covering here, and I will put this on the website so we oh, can great. cover them all. So uh, okay. obviously, we're not going to have enough time for all the material, but uh, this will give you an idea. Great, and I know that having read some of your articles in, in HDTV, etc. magazine, and uh, on the website, I love HDTV that uh, you've got there, I, I know I've been filled in a lot from some of your articles there. But you also do consulting, do you not? You well, yes, yes. Uh, I, uh, I also <coughs> do uh, advising uh, regarding installations of home theaters, okay. and uh, mainly because uh, the main piece of the home theater is high definition. And you also, I, I know, every year go to the Consumer Electronics Show to check out the latest yes, stuff for Yes, I magazines. usually write a report every time, and that report uh, this year is about 100 pages, and last year was 95. <coughs> you can get it for free on the website. You will have it there on the, on the website. Okay, excellent. And uh, so about how much would it cost me, when it's all said and done, to get a, a decent system within a budget? Give, give, me, a, give me a number that's... I, I should budget for. If you go rock bottom price, if you say I'm going to spend a thousand dollars on a very small projection TV and uh, you add the tuner and so on, you're probably going to end up with uh, maybe uh, two thousand dollars, maybe. Great, thank you maybe so lower. much. Well, thanks, Rodolfo. People want to find out more about uh, HDTV. They can catch up uh, with the HDTV and your CES 2004 report that we've already talked about and just plenty of daily information on the HDTV magazine, the uh, website that's on the screen. And they can also find your tutorial articles by subscribing to HDTV Etc. magazine, this one that we've got right here, uh, and obtain a free HDTV CES report on mm -hmm. your website. We talked about that a little bit. The website is on the screen here as we talk. And uh, they can also uh, contact you if they're interested in uh, HDTV yes. and consulting. I'd be glad to uh, answer any questions. My uh, email is going to be there. Yeah, great. The CES report that is free is the one for 2003. The other one is being uh, uh, sold by uh, I Love High Definition TV uh, great. with their subscription. Thank you. Okay, don't forget that there's more information on these and other topics at the CPCUG website, www.cpcug.org, and you can also email your questions to me. Dennis Courtney. My email address is president at cpcug.org. So until uh, our next show, thanks for watching Observing Technology.